Well, hello, hello, everybody. I'm Frankie B. And I'm Mark. Welcome to the show. We've got a brand new show. We've got a lot of things to talk about. Uh, in case what, uh, what happened and two weeks ago, what happened there? I was supposed to come on the show. I, uh, well, uh, we were listed uh, as background actors for um, Hugh Jackman's The Greatest Show on Earth. And uh, it was a last minute thing. I said, do you want to be on, on the movie again this uh, Saturday? It was uh, supposed to be um, near the closing in uh, the film wrap. So uh, I said, yeah, why not? It was uh, a good 15 hours. And in case you're wondering what this is, this is the, the, a little uh, picture of the tent that we were uh, under. Uh, we're going to be talking more about this at the end of the show. As you know, we, uh, we extend the show. We go off the air about like 528, something like that. And then we have uh, 15, 20 extra minutes. And uh, we post that on YouTube. So I'll, more, uh, I'll be talking more about that because it's more of a technical thing, uh, what it is of being a background actor and all, all the tricks and things, a lot, of, a lot of CG and everything like that. But anyway, uh, I do want to say this real quick. Uh, this was um, given to us by the, um, by the PAs, um, by Mel and Billy. And they, they were thanking us for, you know, for the dedication, loyalty, and the patience. Know that you were valued and made our job and an absolute joy to return to uh, to the set every single day. It was a pleasure to work with you guys. Okay. And of course, Billy said, uh, watch, tom watch Bone Tomahawk if you haven't yet. Okay. Uh, you're a big Kurt uh, Russell fan. And a big shout out to Billy and Mel because they're both Godzilla fans. And uh, they had a very small time frame of, of uh, having days off. Hopefully, they got to see Skull Island, but they were really surprised when I, I told them that. Yes, there is a Godzilla animation coming out in fall. And. Um, for you Japanese fans, Attack on Titans. Okay, that's a Japanese import where it was a cartoon that we got made into a two-part movie where giant uh, capitalistic um, humans will attack uh, the people of Japan and the small towns and stuff like that. That's going to be part of King Kong and Godzilla, believe it or not. The whole thing, wow. uh, the MonsterVerse, right. They call it MonsterVerse. As a matter of fact, the person who was in charge of uh, writing all these scripts was the person who wrote um, the Pirates of the Caribbean, I forget his name, but also he wrote a draft for the Godzilla movie that was never made, that took place at the World Trade Center. And he fights, uh, Godzilla fights a giant griffin. Uh, they wrote a great script. They didn't get, didn't get made, but the studio decided to be cheap and let's go and make Godzilla 98, as known as Zilla 98. And we know how that pretty much stunk. And so that script got never made, but they remembered him and now he's in charge of all the writing staff to create, uh, you know, new stories with Godzilla versus Mothra, King Ghidra, Rodan, Titans is on board, and we know King Kong. Now, the reason I got King Kong in the background is because of the box office with China. Which we, so we're going to go right down the line with the box office. But I just want to show one more thing. Um, I get, I'll get more into detail um, in the second half of the show. Uh, what I did learn was that the people who were behind La La Land were behind us. And here's the, uh, the big trivia, okay? This was filmed on the steps of uh, New York City Courts, uh, 60 Center Street. That's uh, uh, Law & Order uh, film there. As a matter of fact, we did another episode of Law & Order. Uh, if you see the 400th episode of Law & Order SVU, the 400th episode, they filmed a scene on the steps and right in the middle of the shot with uh, Marissa Hote, hashtag, I believe, I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, so, you look at that episode, you see, you see my, f my ugly mug right there in the middle of the action <laughs> sequence, believe it or not. Uh, because the other actors were kind of pissed off. I was like, what is he doing there? Anyway, uh, but we filmed, again, I filmed on Friday uh, in the rain, uh, SVU. And then the next day, they filmed here. I was not cold. I was my, I, my duties were already done. And this was like next, maybe the next to the third or last day. Anyway, and this Hugh Jackman writing a uh, supposedly a buff, well, actually, it's supposed to be an elephant. Okay. Anyway, um, what I did learn was a uh, lot of the real effects, uh, uh, the ladies breathing fire. Uh, Zendaya. You, you know Zendaya from Disney Channel? Yeah, only the young ones know. She was actually doing her own stunt work on trapeze. She's one of the trapeze artists. They had a stunt double. I was very surprised. Congratulations on her. She was doing a lot of her own swinging uh, stuff. They had a drone which f filmed around and uh, we learned, remember, um, talk about Rogue One, which we're going to be talking about behind the scenes there. And remember I said there was a scene um, when they landing on the beach and it looked like it was filmed from a point of view from a drone. Right. We, so this was the first time I actually saw this. Uh, they were actually using a drone going around in circles around Hugh Jackman. Unfortunately, the last, I mean, maybe the 10th take, 
there was an accident with a drone, and it, according to one of the wires, it crashed on the floor, $5,000 out the window. Ouch. Yeah, that's when they said, okay, break for lunch. So that was good. And what was the other thing? And there was about three, 400 of us any given day to portray 1,000 people in, in a circuit stand. And we actually, 100 of us, uh, including me, got called by the casting director to actually do a, a scene where we were sitting in the special bleachers covered in green screen. And I said, okay, look up at the trapeze. Okay, look over there for the lions. Look over there for the bears. Oh, my. And they're going to actually cut and paste um, us in segments of the audience. Now, all this technical stuff, I'm talking a little bit more after the show, but I really can't say much about the story. If you go to Wikipedia, put in Pete Bottom, the story is there. But everything was shot out of sequence. So if I, even if I wanted to tell you what the story is, I couldn't. But it is a musical, and let me tell you, the music is a hell of a lot better than La La Land. Uh, the bitter lady, she sings a solo song, and the, the word already is out that she's, she's going to get Oscar nominated for that song. And, uh, and what's the other thing? Um, oh, so here's the trivia. Let's, and then we can move on to the top ten box office. Okay, the trivia. What does Hugh Jackman and Godzilla 2014 uh, have in common? Well, the trivia is, believe it or not, days after days, this gentleman was sitting, uh, sitting next to me or we're in the general area when they were di directing us, or not directing us, please stand behind the camera. And this guy with the gray hair. And then finally, hi Kelly, uh, fellow background actor, she said, you know who that is? I said, that's Seamus, the famous Seamus, director of photography. He directed Godzilla, uh, well, the, he's the director of photography, cinematography of uh, Godzilla 2014. And he's doing this picture. And he also was the director of photography of The Avengers. So, that's the little winning trivia. So, anybody on the blog? Uh, did, did we put up the blog? No. Okay, let's do that real quick here. That is the blog. And um, that was, uh, I think, the last post. And I put the trivia. What does Godzilla 14 have in common with Logan? Hugh Jackman, okay, it's the director of the photography. And just a little Just go to the blog. And I'm going to be doing a new radio show. The radio show is also getting revamped. Okay. And for your lawyer fans, you know, I'm on Instagram. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the, the screenshot right there. That's me. And that's Marista and the other actor. I forget his name, Peter something. Sorry about that. And underneath, that's... Uh, uh, Warburg. Scene. Scenes. One scene was in a polling oh, There you ring. are, all the way in the back. All oh, in the back, and the, the little cute little girl in front of me is Tara, uh, a real good friend, another uh, fellow background actor. I'm, I've been meeting a lot of new friends uh, on these. Um, on in the background. And, and the film sh and the film shoots, yeah. But you know, <laughs> what happens is we hang out about two, three hours before the, we're ready for the next scene, so we get to know each other. I and can't wait before the book comes out. The book comes out, it'll be life in the background. <laughs> I actually, that's, uh, um, I didn't bring the book with me. Uh, Anna Kendricks, uh, Scrappy Little Nobody. Uh, she wrote a great book, and she mentions that she was one of the background actors in the Twilight uh, movie. Kind of a serial thing? Hmm. Yeah, I didn't bring the book with me. Anyway, I'm, let's go on to the show. Let's get on to the box office. Okay. I'd like to thank Anna, the engineer. She was helping us out there. I kind of kept a little bit longer than usual. But, okay, let's get to the box office. Uh, and we're going to put a lot of little trivia in between. Uh, how was your vacation, by the way? You were in Ecuador, right? Yeah, yeah. How was it? Two weeks. Uh, it's, it's, um, it was pretty nice. It was uh, humid. It was hot. But a lot of it's been globalized. That means that uh, I couldn't find any traditional, almost any traditional food over there. I had to either... Uh, Pass by a McDonald's. <laughs> I had to pass, pass by a, a Kentucky Fried Chicken, or an offshoot of it. So it, it, it's like mo most mm -hmm. of the time I said, "Where should I go eat?" And and everybody kept telling me, "Well, the best place to eat wouldn't be on the street." They said, uh, "Your best chance is going to the mall." I'm like, "Going to the mall? Yeah, I want to just stay in New York." A exactly. I took a picture once, and uh, it was McDonald's, uh, Burger King, and Chester Fried Chicken. And in the background it was the Sears Mall. And I said, yeah, that's Puerto Rico. I said, Frank, that's not Puerto Rico. That's, that's New Jersey. You couldn't even tell. You know, it got yeah. some Americanized. And to get like uh, traditional, traditional Puerto Rican food, you would have to hit the roads. Like yeah. you hit the, high, uh, the highway, then you hit the little roads into the small towns. Yeah. Yeah. And you it's get a traditional it's food. This is a search for money that's killing everything. 
Yeah, I mean, they, they got so Americanized, it's you know? Yeah, it's sucking the life out of, out of everything. It, it was, uh, when I was, like I said, when I was in Guayaquil, it, it, it reminded me almost being in Fulton Street, uh, downtown Manhattan. <laughs> it was as bad. It's hard to find any place to eat that's decent. Uh, anything inexpensive to eat that's decent and most of the stores down that that I guess that Avenue were probably all electronic shops like uh, and and I wasn't really interested in buying a refrigerator a washing machine <laughs> or an <laughs> air conditioning set <laughs> or a big screen TV that that's how bad it's gotten yeah oh, it's terrible. A, a, everything is getting Americanized oh that's yeah terrible. for for the worse instead of for it's the better they don't call it Americanized anymore it's called globalization crap okay let's get to the box office okay um so um, we're going down in, in order here number one at the box office right now boss baby uh i thought it was really cute hysterical baby said oh it's more for the kids no boss baby alec Bowen does a great job mm -hmm. a lot of people uh went to see this movie because alec Bowen and he anybody work for in a nine to five office job you get all the jokes He's talking, he's talking about the stock market. At one point, he talks to a character. It's like, you went to community college, and you want to raise? Anybody who's in a 9-to-5 job will get that joke, okay? And so... Hey, even Einstein could get a job. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I don't even want to talk what he's talking about, because uh, if you went to community college, they don't want to give you a raise. If you were Einstein, they didn't want to give you a job. So... Exactly. But, uh, the, the, uh, but there's a lot of... And, yet, and, yet, and yet people like uh, uh, George Bush... Uh, became president and Donald Trump. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So okay. much for qualifications. And they talk about America not, uh, and and that's what I always hate when they when some Americans say, "Oh, America's not about second place trophies." Uh, I, I think you're wrong about that <laughs> because most of the stuff we have is per pretty second rate. Pretty much, it's been second rate for a very long time. I think, I think since uh, Ford came out with his automobiles. And since Ferrari came out, we've been second place. Mm hmm. Okay. And then any movie that uh, includes the Beatles' uh, Blackbird and has Elvis and has the Banana Split song. Does anybody remember that one? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, the Banana Split uh, wow. song was in the soundtrack. The That's Witch the 70s, man. Yeah. And the, the, the weird thing about it is that anybody who stayed long enough, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> 10 minutes worth of credits at the very end. Oh my God. Because there was a song that I couldn't figure out. Uh, so I stuck around there, uh, you know, uh, for 10 minutes worth of credit and at the very end, they did a little marvel. Uh, the, the kid has an alarm clock that looks like a, a wizard, like, uh, like it looks like Gandalf the Wizard, Lord of the Rings. And I said, okay, time is up, you can go home now. After 10 minutes of credit, they stuck that little clip in there. I mean, who was going to stick around for, t uh, for 10 minutes? Well, obviously, one idiot did. Uh, okay. Um, Book Baby, three out of five. Next, Beauty and the Beast. Dull, dull, dull. It's going to make a hundred, uh, well, it's question with the $1 billion mark. Dull yeah. acting, dull comedy, uh, dull music, just dull, dull, dull. I was bored out of my skull. I didn't see it. Don't, b don't bother. And w do we need another, no. another remake of this? Enough. Going in style, well, we, we both didn't see it. Nope. Uh, unfortunately, okay, Beauty and Beast, I gave it a one. Okay, Going in style, we haven't seen it. Um, it's, not, it's not even going to clear $10 million this weekend. So, a little trivia I just want to mention. Um, please, I'm going in order. Okay, I'm going to answer two little trivia questions right here. Battle of Britain, uh, 1969 with Michael Caine. Uh, this is going to be remade by Ridley Scott with uh, CG. The problem with this movie, they show you close-ups of all the, the pilots in the... Um, and, uh, and the cockpits of the airplanes. But unfortunately, they wear these masks, and a lot of times you don't know which act is which. Uh, Billy's kind of mentioned this. He's going to correct that. Okay. Would you put a name tag? Uh, I don't know how, yeah, exactly. I don't know how they're going to do that. All you have to do is put a name tag on the top of the head, and then you know who you're talking about. Well, yeah, but that's what they did with uh, Top Gun. R Maverick. Yeah, yeah Maverick, the Ace, the, 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 right, Goose. The, exactly. They had all the nicknames on yeah, top, so yeah. you know, because they also had masks. That's all you have to do. Okay. Uh, F. Gary Gray. Uh, uh, is the director for Straight Outta Compton, and of course he's doing the new um, Fate of the Fast, Furious. Yeah, Fast and the Furious. Thank you. And he did uh, the Italian job. This is the um, uh, the Mike Rockberg version, uh, and both uh, Charlene Theron and Jason Statham were in this movie. They're going to be in the Fate of the Furious. Wow, look at that! A reunion. Yeah, a reunion. Uh, this is a remake of an Italian picture. 
uh, with Michael Caine. Actually, it was an Italian-English production. Wow. Uh, back Six in Degrees of Michael Caine. Yeah, um, but back in 1966. If you like this film, see the original with Michael Caine, that's even better. But uh, yeah, we figure Michael Caine. Right. Excellent actor. Excellent actor. So, uh, unfortunately, this movie is going to tank. The other movie they're going to tank. Remember Smurfs made over $500 million at the box office? This uh, one is not even going to clear... I remember that. that. This one is not even going to clear $10 million. I am shocked. Why not? Yeah. Coming at number four, DOA. Talk about DOA, Ghost in the Shell. Ooh, I saw it. I got nothing to say about it. I give it a one. Right. What, what do you say? Uh, I like the colors. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was greatly uh, animated. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I would have, I would have wished to have been able to have the ability to do all that work to to bring everything like that uh, to fruition. But I know I, I hear you. Some people said they weren't happy with it, but I I enjoyed it. It was a, a beautiful experience. I mean, I would I would wish to live in a beautiful. Uh, W what can I call it? Uh, a futuristic uh, world? Yeah, futuristic kaleidoscope color world like that. Uh, to me, it was just a rip off of Blade Runner. Next! I would love to live in Blade Runner too. That wouldn't be bad either. Mm, Not nah, too much rain. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Power Rangers. Yes, I saw it. Okay, I gave it a two out of five. Uh, eight. To f once I heard it, it takes 90 minutes before they become Power Rangers, I said that's bull crap. But the last half hour is kind of worth it. And it's a little trivia. To Bumblebee. Mm. Do you remember that scene? Uh, I didn't. I'm, you reminded me of the scene. You told me uh, about when the scene happened. And it, it, it's, it's, as you were saying, it was when they became the Zord and they grabbed uh, this Volkswagen Beetle and, and scoot it down the highway. Yeah, well, but I, I actually it was a Camaro, yellow Camaro. Okay. Uh, okay, with black. Uh, then, but then uh, that's a, a reference like that, you know, because of, after a while, I was like, you know, this is starting to look like Transformers. And sure enough, just when I was thinking that, uh, <laughs> I think it was the Blue Ranger, he grabbed the Camaro and said, sorry about that, Bumblebee. So they kind of like acknowledged uh, Transformers, which I thought was very cool. And the other thing I like, when it became this, what's the called? Meta... Uh, the Zoids. The Zoids, Zoids. The big Zoid thing. The Megazoid. The Megazoid. What I liked about it is... It's sort of like when you have these tables and you, and, and you go to a restaurant and you see a, a whole a huge family come in and they combine the table. That's a mega table. Okay, that's so a mega table. There, there you go. go. Megazoid. The Megazoid. Okay. Um, what I liked about it is when, when they all got together, you see the camera pulls out and you see every one of them talking to each other. That you never saw that in a TV show. Usually it'd be close-ups. I said that because then they, uh, they needed to learn how to walk all together. Because at first they, they try to walk and they almost like trip. And it's okay, guys, we got to do this all together. And then you see all of them individually within the, the whole framework. I thought that was done really nice. Um, yeah, but you're right. It, it sort of did take a, a build up to a point. It's sort of like, was, was at the beginning, it was sort of like something out of the, the Breakfast Club. Where they became friends, pals, and the tension, and let's all work up, and blah blah blah, and be the best friends. And I was hoping at at the end that someone, uh, I guess, uh, the the nerdy of all of them would write something. We have no excuses. We are the Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. And then he throws a f fist pump in the air. Yeah, that's what I was hoping to see at the end. Yeah, at the ending, he uh, what? He just uh, what, he goes back to the spaceship and does what? He hands over the, the the blade or something like that, and then he just walks up, and that's the way the movie ends. Uh, it was disappointing. The action at the end was good, but they, they should have had it at the beginning. They, they took too long with it. Okay, the big one, the two big ones. Okay, Skull Allen. Um, it made over $75 million in two days on a Friday mm. and Saturday. It's nice. Right now, it's 120 million mark. I said, like I said, China is always about a week or two behind. Uh, the prediction is going to cross 150 to 175. It might do Pacific Rim 200 million. This is where Star Wars gets no respect. And we're I only, see it. Yeah, Star Wars only makes about 125 million. Wow. I and guess Star Wars needs to bring in big giant fighting robots uh, yeah uh, or, or big uh, giant creatures or yeah, something big, uh, they, they should have a big giant creature they should fight the big giant creature or a big giant monster and also um last the last show like i said uh, the last show i was supposed to do couldn't do it because i was doing uh the great show with hugh jackman and uh, I, yeah, I heard you and hugh jackman are friends now Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, well, we did get the, the shake hands. Yeah, you know, is, and I uh, say, hey, congratulations on Logan. And you patted me on the, on the shoulder here. So thanks, mate. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. Did it feel like a, like a strong, strong hit? 
Um, you can feel his strength is no. He had a he had an aluminium claw. No, he grabbed the hand tight there. Uh, you know, he it was he, broken. He, yeah, oh, I almost shoot. broke my piano fingers there. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm a piano player. Yeah, but he is a tall, he is a tall guy. <laughs> and there was there was a scene with the we the, they actually filmed with him and his children. They were on the scene. I mean, um, this other girl, we were like oh, maybe like three walls by, uh, behind him. With the, which uh, that was an interesting experience. More on the second half of the show. But going to Skull Allen is doing really damn good in China. So because they were talking about maybe return to Skull Allen before oh they have King Kong and Godzilla. So th that's why uh, I love the movie four out of uh, five. Yeah, I and, it. I, and I, I like the second half. But the little trivia where he fights an octopus. Everybody, you know, a lot of critics are saying, "Oh, that's what uh, the uh, I'll take scene." Uh, Frankenstein conquers the world. Uh, there was an, uh, the long version was he fights an octopus at the very end. Uh, once he kills Barragon, right? That was the international version. The American version we all grew up with. He kills Barragon. Oh, actually, he's, uh, there's an earthquake and he holds, he holds Barragon over his head, uh, his head and him and Barragon both sink into the earth, you know, like a crack in the earth and both get swallowed, nice. whatever. And the international version, after he kills a Barragon, he goes over to, to the water and he fights a, a squid. Everybody said, oh, King, uh, that's Kong with, uh, with Frankenstein. No, 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 no. A lot of people forget that King Kong actually fights an octopus and Godzilla, King Kong versus Godzilla. Mm. Okay, Logan, 600 million, and Skull Island is also going to reach 600 million. Two big hits. Wow. Okay, compared to wow. last so, so you're saying Logan is doing just as good as King Kong Skull as Island? As King Kong, 600 million. You see, that's what, that's what you had to do, Logan. Yeah. For sure you could have done these numbers <coughs> a long time ago if you would have followed this, if you would have done this a long time ago. Well, th they wanted to do a rate at all, but, you know, the, the studio, no, no, got to make it PG because we're going to scare the little kiddies away. Then Forget Deadpool the came kids. out and made 700 million. Forget the kids. The For kids are going to go see it anyway. Yeah. So, okay. And, the um, parents go see it. You know how many, how many kids, uh, I mean, how many parents took their kids to see Deadpool? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know why? Because they're responsible. Okay, <laughs> uh, here's another picture. Life. Yes. The alien ripoff. Uh, already off the top ten. It's not going to uh, clear 25 million. Been oh there, no. done it. It was a ripoff. It was kind of interesting. Maybe you, if you're curious, uh, no you, you, like, yeah, you want to see it. Uh, it's it's completely ripoff of aliens. Everybody dies except for one person oh, at no, the no. end. Oh no! Spoiler. Spoiler. Who cares? And there's a, there is a little twist at the end. I thought it was kind of interesting, but you know, eh, two out of five. Wait till it comes out on Netflix. Okay. Uh, chips. Uh, there was some funny stuff, believe it or not. I thought it was a complete train wreck when I saw the trailer. It wasn't that bad. Wait for Netflix, maybe two or three out of five. The worst parts they showed on the trailer. There's some really funny parts but that was not in the trailer. And so it was not a waste of time. And, and the action sequences were really good, okay? Um, and barely a two out of two out of five maybe okay but um and there was some funny stuff but uh the movie's not the movie cost 25 million whoa and uh, it's going to crash at 16 million so it's where not did, even good where did 25 million dollars go um, um a lot of the action sequences the money was well spent on the action Get sequences the heck, guys. yeah really yeah okay now here we go we're gonna end the show here the big controversy rogue one and we said this before the director's cut. The, uh, Tony Gilroy and everybody else came in afterwards and did a bunch of reshoots. Basically, the third. There's an hour and 15 minutes of behind the scenes, mm. all related to Garth Edwards. So that's basically the first hour. So all the footage that you see are behind the scenes is all related to the Garth Edwards footage. Nothing is mentioned about the reshoots. Nothing's mentioned about bringing the people like Tony Gilroy for the reshoots and the extra photography and the extra special effects, changing the whole ending, like that Darth Vader at the end we killed. None of that is mentioned, okay? Because Tony Gilroy directed that. So what you get here, the behind the scenes, is basically everything that Garth Edwards did before the studio decides to change the whole movie around, basically. So uh, just to finalize that, they said no director's cut. They got more than enough footage. Now, they're also saying, well, there were some scenes that were planned, but we didn't even get to it already. They were deleted from the script. Now, if you can make Carrie Fisher bring her back at the end of the movie or talk about the undead Peter O'Toole, who was, uh, Peter Tool, uh, was the dead of like 20 years or 20, 30 years, whatever, they bring him back to life through, through another actor, computer CG, re replacing his face and everything. Technology with computers... I've been at movie sets, I've I seen this happen. They can do the director's cut. If you look at Superman 2, 
a director's version by Richard Donner. Remember, Richard Donner got fired in the Superman 2? He got replaced by Richard Lester. They found a lot of the <coughs> Lester footage that was edited out in the movie, and they put uh, uh, the Richard Donner version back together. Of course, when that thing was put together, technology was not that tight 10 mm -hmm. years ago. They can do the alternate director's cut version of this with no problem whatsoever. Disney is holding out, and eventually down the line, we'll, we'll get a director's cut. I believe so. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, when they want to go back into the well, what, what are they going to do? Say no? Yeah, as, as, exactly. Know, money talks. M money talks, you know, but w once... Didn't they, didn't, wasn't it someone who once said, oh, I'm only going to make this many Star Wars films, and then that'll be the end of it? Mm-hmm. Chiching. Okay. Transformers has been announced. They're gonna make. They got. They wrote fifteen stories. No. For fifteen movies. Oh my God. Will we still have to see them, or, or can we just from now on say, hey, it's another Transformers movie, and that's it? No, we're gonna be retired by then. <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna see that happen, folks. Uh, and of course, well, uh, I'm saying, uh, anyone coming out from now on, can we not have? To, do we not have to see it? And can we just say, hey, it's just a Transformers film? Yeah, well, same thing like Pirates of the Caribbean. Another, oh my God, uh, another of uh, Fate in the Furious. See you know, one of those. Uh, yeah, I mean that, that's what that's what's coming. Uh, no, the re re revisiting Alien franchise again. And let me tell you, we are getting tired of this, folks. One last thing, Carrie Fisher. It was announced in the Hollywood Reporter yesterday. They, uh, her Carrie Fisher's brother and her daughter Billy Boyd both gave permission for them to use Carrie Fisher's likeness. So they can f go ahead with episode nine. Remember, they said, "Oh, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do the, the Carrie know, Fisher thing. They're, we're not gonna do the Princess Leia thing again." You know, yes, I, they will. They're gonna uh, do it again for number nine, so I'm, they can wrap up the I story. I am shocked. She had in the Force Awakens. She had little to no um, I huge impact in the film. Right. In the, in in the Force Awakens, she had little to no impact, and now all of a sudden in episode nine, she's gonna have she's gonna have an impact. Which you gonna go, mm -mm. and then. <laughs> and you'll see her, and then I'll be it. <laughs> I go, okay, here's a check for $15 million. I mean, okay, she's out of the story. You know, they're, they're probably going to wrap it up somehow for number nine. Uh, the, the room is... Uh, oh, uh, we got, we got uh, 20, 20 minutes before the live show's over. Who knows what's going to happen to uh, Luke Skywalker. You know, they're going over to the, uh, to the new generation, so that's pretty much a wrap-up. Okay, we're going to be back in two weeks. Uh, uh, we're going to review Fate and the Furious. Okay? Right. Watch us on YouTube. Yeah, and now, right. okay. How do you? I don't. And here comes the second half of right. the show. This is the second half of the show for the YouTube viewers. Okay. Um, okay, let's talk a little about behind the scenes. Now, we're, we're talking, um, I didn't get a chance to show Thor, but that's okay. Uh, I just want to show something archives. I didn't show this uh, during Ooh, the show there. Let me see this Thor thing. Okay, this was a great magazine. Talking about Star Wars. Uh, the p a magazine was called Moving Pictures. Moving pictures, and uh, unfortunately, they only lasted about five years. They went out of business. Mm. Uh, and then so much from moving pictures. Yep, and then there was another one, King Kong, the Peter Jackson uh, story. Um, I, I was told these things are going for, for about 100 apiece on the market, believe it or not. Why? I don't know, but there you go. Well, uh, it, it, like, it's like they said. It's that thing that they do on eBay. Someone puts a price on it, and then everybody believes that that's the, actu that's the actual price. Right. And it's... It more or less depends on what someone's willing to actually pay you. If they're not willing to give you hundred dollars, it ain't, it's not worth a hundred dollars unless it w so unless you get the hundred dollars in your pa uh, in your uh, in your hand. Right. I, I mean, it's it's like uh, well, it's, it's like diamonds. Somebody decide let's uh, let's oh make the diamond. Yeah. I mean, there's so many rocks produced yeah. in South America, uh, in South Africa. Yes, but uh, let's let's. It's a false monopoly. A false monopoly. Same thing like gold. Gold is just yeah. another mineral. Yeah. Why not silver? Why not yeah. bronze? No, yeah. let's pick yeah. let's pick gold yeah. because it's shinier. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like, uh, during the uh, what was it? The Aztec, uh, yeah, the Aztec Empire. Right. Gold was probably littered all over the all over um, uh, Mexico, and they they would they would look at it and use it as jewelry, and that was it. Jewelry, cups, drinking, nothing. It wasn't. It was like, oh, g this is great, but everybody was wearing it. Right. The other way. He actually flips over him. Hugh, this time, was being pulled by a cable. Uh, uh, the guy, production manager, that's how we do a lot of stunts. Um, because he worked in superhero movies. So you, I saw the scenes with the harness, how they worked that, and how they do pulling cables, them sliding across the floor. So a lot of times you see Thor or, or, or Iron Man sliding across the floor, they usually have power cables attached to them. To, en to enhance the effect. Um, so, I'll, 
what I mostly saw was a lot of technical stuff that's implied to what they do to other movies. Mm -hmm. And little did I realize it was done. That's a, a lot of the stuff was applied to Avengers. Mm. So now, I yeah, believe it. yeah. So it, uh, we got to see a lot of technical stuff that yeah. you usually don't see. Okay, but I can say this: the songs are ten times better. L really li a lively show. Went home, got them the next morning, and the you know you get always get a tune in your head. Wake up the next. This is the greatest show. This is the greatest show. Da, da. <laughs> this is the greatest show. Ay, ay, ay. I got to get this tune out of my head. It was like, uh, let's go Mets. Let's go Mets. Yeah, but the tunes are really great. I can actually say that, you know, especially after La La Land and all the dull fest of oh, Beauty and the Beast. Oh, God. I wonder if they ever do the movie of Vince McMahon, how, uh, how that's going to be. Uh, he was... Uh, is it going to be like a musical, too? That they, you know, let me tell you. A lot of studios are thinking of taking a lot of these properties and turning them into musicals. Look, look, look what they did with the Bronx Tale. They made that into a friggin' musical on Broadway. Wow, yep. Spider-Man, Rocky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they haven't done Batman yet, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted to see Spider-Man on, on Broadway, but I didn't know which night to go. You know, I was looking for the night where the guy would actually go plop on the floor. I know, that's mean. I know. Yeah, I can help that's it. what a lot of people went to to <laughs> see if that was going to happen. Yeah, you know. I went, but... <laughs> How, oh, you did go see this? Yeah, yeah. How yeah. was that? It was kind of silly. <laughs> <laughs> but he was actually you know? on, on, those, uh, on the wires, right? Going yeah, yeah. They were, uh, at one point, they would have... Sort of like, um, I forgot what the character, the vulture character, was it? I'm not sure if it was a vulture, it was uh, the go Green Goblin. They would have like, the guy with the glider, and, and they would have Spider-Man fight with him on the glider, and, it was, and you could see that they were on strings and ropes going around, you know, the audience, and, and, and at any moment you thought to yourself, those, those cables can snap. Right. And they could fall right on top of us. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't looking to, uh, towards that. I was like, oh, I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're doing a lot of crazy things, you know, a lot of, like, you know, things where you would say, wow, these guys are really risking their lives. Just for a Broadway show, huh? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like we could either do th two things, work on the script, work on the music, work on the dancing, or make it make it to the point where we're going to hurt ourselves and people will be looking at that almost like something out of a wrestling match. Right. So that's I, I guess that's what they went for. Well, I, I see, uh, at least that's like live. Like I said, in, in this particular movie with Hugh Jackman, they were doing a lot of things live, right on the s on the set. There was you know there was no fakery, no bullshit. I mean, it was actually r right there, and that that just boggled the mind. It's like you know, there's ways well, to. Well, I, I guess we better wrap it up. We're we're going into two minutes in. It's almost uh, fifty. We're at, at the forty minute mark. Good looking out as o as always. Okay, so. Um, We'll be, uh, we'll be talking more when uh, th this movie is going to be released at, um, what you call it, in Christmas time. Uh, when you I didn't hear it here. Okay. And when it comes out, then I, you know, then I can tell you about, about uh, individual shots and the story and everything. Right, because you can't talk about it. Yeah. So, me, me, so don't ask him. <laughs> but basically, technically, it, uh, uh, it was a great experience. And uh, 20th Century Fox is definitely going to push this for the Academy Awards. So you're going to be hearing a lot about, about this movie. But not, not because I uh, worked on the production, but it won't be like La La Land, which I thought was disappointing. It won't be a dull sense like Beauty and the Beast. The songs are really uppity. They're catchy. It, it was a fun experience. And uh, these guys really worked hard. I mean, you know, I never heard of Zendaya, but she, that, that girl was up in the, on the swings there. So good for her and everything. And uh, it, was, uh, it was really a, a pleasure uh, to work uh, on this uh, film. Anyway, uh, with that being said, we're going to come back and talk about uh, Fate and the Fury. Um, the, what, the Fate and the Fury? Is yeah, that it? The, the, fate, fate, and the yeah, Fate of the Furies. It, look, th that's a freaking James Bond film. Once that submarine came out of the ice, th th uh, th that turned into a James Bond film. I'm sorry. It has nothing to do with the cars no more. But anyway, uh, so we can, this will be edited and hopefully it will be up on Monday on YouTube. Thanks for uh, subscribing and tuning into our YouTube channel, um, Video Line Express on YouTube. It's as simple as that. Yes. Uh, we got the link on our blog. Don't forget the blog. The website is down for now. Just go to the blog. You can follow me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook. The best bet is Instagram because with Instagram, they got a nice little gadget. I can share whatever I post on Instagram, I can share on Twitter and Facebook. And it's a nice little shortcut for me. So instead of posting on Facebook, then po posting on here, posting over there. I also post on Tumblr. So Instagram does that for me. Instagram, boom. At the same time, I tweet over to Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook. Okay, that's about it. We're back in two weeks talking about Freddy and Fury. I'm Frankie San. And I'm Mark. 
Thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll see you in two weeks. Okay. And our freeze frame. <laughs> a nod to, what was it? Uh, the naked gun? Yes. The naked gun. There you go.